Hi, my name is Nicole, and today I'm going to show you how to configure a CTC SC300 series signal conditioner using our free signal conditioner software. Our free software saves you time and money by allowing you to fully customize your device for your specific application. That means you'll never have to ship your signal conditioner back to CTC. If you don't already have our software installed, go to ctconline.com, and then under Resources, click on Online Utilities. Then click the Software Downloads button. Please note you will be required to enter a valid serial number for a CTC brand signal conditioner in order to complete your download. Since I already have my software installed, I will go ahead and launch that. And please note that you always should be launching your software prior to plugging in your signal conditioner to your computer. So now that my software is open and running, I am going to plug in my signal conditioner via USB. When I do this, the light on the top of the signal conditioner will momentarily blink between red and green, and then it will stop as a solid orange color. When it becomes solid orange, the signal conditioner is now ready to be programmed. Please note that if you do unplug your signal conditioner while using the software, which I will show you, you will get a pop-up notifying you that the device was unplugged. Simply click OK, and then plug your signal conditioner back in via USB. The lights will flash red and green and then settle on a solid orange color. And then your signal conditioner serial number will also appear in this dropdown. Make sure the correct serial number for your device is selected here, and then click on configure your signal conditioner on the left. Before we go ahead and enter any information on this page, we are going to scroll down to the bottom and check that our software and firmware versions are the most up-to-date version numbers. The most up-to-date version numbers are posted on our online utilities page so that you can confirm you are using the most up-to-date versions. The firmware version shown represents the version of embedded software that is running on your signal conditioner that you've plugged into program. It is a great idea to periodically check that your signal conditioner is up to date as new versions may come with important bug fixes and feature improvements. If your software is up to date and a signal conditioner with out of date firmware is plugged in, the software will automatically attempt to update the signal conditioner's firmware. A pop-up message will appear in this case notifying you of this process. Always keep your software up to date, as this will ensure the software is always carrying and checking for the newest firmware version. If your software isn't up to date, simply download, install, and launch the current version from our website as I've previously shown you. If you need to perform a manual signal conditioner firmware update, make sure you do have the newest version of the software installed and open, because older versions may be carrying older versions of device firmware. So with your up-to-date software running, click on Update Firmware on the left side of the screen, and then click the Update Firmware button. The signal conditioner's lights will flash red and green during this process, signifying that it, the firmware is being updated. On this pop-up, which is telling you that your conditioner is being updated, click OK. Remember not to unplug your device while this process is being completed. When the process is completed, a pop-up will appear on the screen indicating that the firmware has been updated. Once this pop-up appears saying that your firmware has updated, you just simply click OK, and now you are ready to configure your signal conditioner. Click back on Configure Your Signal Conditioner on the left side. On this screen, you will notice that the part number, the serial number, and the device type are automatically populated, and they are unable to be changed. Below that, you will begin entering values for the specific configuration you are looking for. I will guide you step-by-step step through these fields. We also have these handy information hover over buttons to help guide you through the process. In the input sensitivity and units fields, you will select the sensitivity value of and the unit of the sensor you are using with your signal conditioner. Let's say for this example, we are programming to use your signal conditioner with an AC102 sensor, 
which has a nominal sensitivity of 100 millivolts per G. You would select 100 millivolts from the sensitivity and G from the input units dropdowns. Below that, in the IEPE power field, you will select between enabled and disabled. Enabled will be selected if you want the signal conditioner to provide power to your sensor. This is the most common option. Disabled would be selected if you have a separate power supply for your sensor or if you are using the signal conditioner with a proximity probe. The temperature scaling field to the right is only used when you are using your signal conditioner with a temperature sensor. You would select the temperature sensor from the drop down. For an SC310 single channel signal conditioner, fill in the fields under channel one only. The full scale range and output units fields are where you will choose your desired measurement range in units. These parameters together form the scaling for the output channel. These values should be selected based on average machine vibration, expected fault frequencies and amplitudes, and should cover a range from acceptable to unacceptable vibration levels for proper alerting or trending. If an accelerometer is used and the output unit selected is velocity in either millimeters per second or inches per second, the signal conditioner will integrate the input signal. For resolution purposes, a good rule of thumb is to make sure that your baseline level of vibration is no less than 5% of the full scale range. The default configuration built around covering ISO 10816 guidelines sets these parameters to zero to two inches per second. This is a good baseline to use if you are unsure of what to set this to. The measurement field below it will allow you to choose from four different options, peak, peak to peak, root mean squared, or peak hold. This determines what measurement type is used for the, full for the full scale range scaling. RMS is used as the default configuration. If you select peak hold, you'll also need to enter a specific hold time in the field to the right. The hold time refers to how long the signal conditioner will hold the greatest vibration peak before it resets the measurement. You can refer to CTC's free vibration calculator tool for more information about each measurement type in order to help you choose. I will show you that tool quickly. This is our vibration calculator tool. And if you do not already have this free tool, it is available for download on our online utilities page. In the output type field, you will select from four different milliamp or voltage output options. 0 to 20 MA current loop with magnitude proportional to vibration scaling, 4 to 20 MA current loop with magnitude proportional to vibration, or 0 to 5 or 0 to 10 volt output voltage signal with magnitude proportional to vibration scaling. 4 to 20 MA current loops are the most popular and commonly used in the industry and is therefore selected for use in the default configuration. The filter range field below that here is where you'll select what vibration fault frequencies you want to measure. The default filter range is 10 hertz to one kilohertz. If your frequencies of interest lie below one kilohertz, then the output unit discussed above should be set for velocity in either millimeters per second or inches per second. Conversely, if you know you want to be measuring in velocity, then your frequency range should not extend above one kilohertz. This is because velocity is not a good or appropriate measurement above 1 kilohertz and is best used for frequencies between 10 hertz and 1 kilohertz. If your frequencies of interest lie above 1 kilohertz, then the output unit should be set for acceleration or G's. This is because acceleration is not a very good measurement for frequencies below 1 kilohertz, but is best for high frequency monitoring. If you expect the need to monitor fault frequencies below and above one kilohertz, we strongly suggest the use of a dual channel SC320 signal conditioner in which one channel can monitor low frequency velocity and the second channel can monitor higher frequency acceleration. If you try to squeeze into one wide frequency range with one output unit, you will be guaranteed to lose vibration data. This is because larger amplitude vibration located in the dominant frequency span of whatever unit is being used will drown out smaller amplitude vibration elsewhere in the spectrum. 
You can also refer back to our vibration calculator to determine what's best for your application. The final field that you will complete is the output smoothing field. This option applies a time constant to the response of the output. This option, if it is desired, can help eliminate or reduce sharp instantaneous spikes in vibration data caused by random impacts, transients, or other sources of vibration noise. There is a preset default smoothing option, but you can also select no smoothing or increase the smoothing with one second being the maximum allowed time constant. If you are programming an SC320 device, you will now complete all of the fields in the column under channel two. Please note, velocity is used for monitoring normal maintenance issues and acceleration is used for higher frequency applications like bearing faults. Once you've completed all your necessary fields, now click program your signal conditioner. The configuration window will appear and it will show you your progress. Please remember not to unplug your device during this time. Once the device has been programmed, the loading bar will disappear and your new part number will appear in the bottom left corner of the screen. You may now unplug your signal conditioner. When you do so, you will get another pop-up and you can simply click OK. You have now successfully programmed an SC300 series signal conditioner. I hope you found this video walkthrough helpful. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, please feel free to contact your CTC sales representative for additional assistance. Thank you for watching.